Hello, 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 people out there. I want to say hello to our LinkedIn family, our Facebook followers, our Twitter twitchers, <laughs> our YouTube users. <laughs> I want to say hello to everybody. Thank you for tuning in on this Sunday at such short notice. For those of you that are tuning in, uh, in the comments, please leave where you're from and where you're at. And so, therefore, we can address you. And welcome to the Rich and Dwelling Show. I'm your host. Dwelling the glue Williams because why I like to keep things together and we have none other than Richard Cabrera as known as the innovator rich my man How you been? And how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. Right. We're doing great doing great. Everything's going well uh, <laughs> Busy weeks a lot of travel, you know how that goes with work and everything else, but we're here, right? I hear I hear that my man. I hear that, you know, we um I, I was telling you earlier man, I'm digging that California Angels hat man uh, You know cuz one thing I love about the California Angels is uh, you know I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be kind of selfish my mother which is deceased her name was Annie So I've always wore uh, caps with the with the with the with the letter a on it So that right there has been one of my special hats that I definitely have to get so I'm, I'm really digging the hat so Rich, the last time you and I spoke, you know, I remember you had mentioned that you were so busy, home ownership, et cetera, et cetera. What else is going on, you know, in your neck of the woods? Uh, you know, this week was a busy week. I um, mm -hmm. just attended the California Dialysis Conference this week, which was a big, mm -hmm. a big event, um, heavily attended, great time. Uh, great. You know, you can you can check out my LinkedIn for some of the pictures and the posts that we have while we were there. Um, but yeah, it was a great week getting to meet with uh, a lot of the people that, you know, you know how these conferences are. It's like you, you see people, a lot of people coming in that you haven't right. seen in a while, especially since yes. this was the first one post COVID. So right. uh, that was in person. So, you know, it was, it was good to see a lot of old familiar faces and uh, really get to reconnect with a lot of these folks while we were out there. Oh man, that, that's always great. You know, I, um, you know, one thing I love about conferences, you know, just as well as you said, I'll piggyback on what you said, you know, you're reconnecting other than, you know, just via Zoom or Facebook, fa I mean, FaceTime, texting, et cetera. And it's always to reconnect. I love that as well. Uh, you know, I, you know, we got a, we got a busy, we got a busy, we got a busy month and we got a busy month to come. You and I, especially, you know, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, Richard Cabrera and myself will be in Indianapolis uh, if I'm going to that the dates are October 5th through the 7th for uh, Renal Health Association Conference, RHA. Um, so, uh, Rich, you and I will be on a, a home dialysis panel, correct? Correct. That's it. Yeah, yes. Yes. I, I, I'm looking very forward to that. And, and you know, I've ne I never been to this, the city and state of, in, uh, of Indianapolis, Indiana. I've never been. Uh, I, I've traveled throughout my, my you know, my, uh, my, my technician career as a technician, and I've, I've been to 44 states, you know, and uh, so I, I said, now I can honestly say that I can, I, I've been to 45, I'm 45 years old, so it's all falling in line with the universe. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, and my I, can, goodness. I can maybe show you around a little bit. I've actually, yeah. I was just there not too long ago, so yeah, I, I, I love the city, I think it's going to be a, a good time, it's going to be a right. lot going on, and it'll be a great, uh, great time to, to get together. Oh man, that'd be that'd be perfect, man. That'd be perfect. Okay, cool. So, so you know, also, man, I, I you know, I I got some other exciting news, Rich, too, this week. You know, I um, I'm a big fan of of, of Seattle, Washington. You know, um, I I did a travel assignment there. I, I I'm much in love with Northwest Kidney Center, based on the fact that you know, I, if I'm not mistaken, that's where the first uh dialysis treatment was given. I'm not sure if that was the first transplant, but the first renal treatment was given there in Northwest uh, in Seattle, uh, Washington area. But uh, in, in Northwest has uh, they had the, the um to my knowledge the only dialysis museum, and I had the right. privilege, honor, and privilege to have many, many pictures and to visit that museum a, a few years back uh, pre-COVID. Uh, and, and to piggyback off that to mention, I will be attending their gala on October 15th, which is a Saturday next month. And I've been presented with an opportunity to be a cocktail mocktail contestant. So uh, it's, it's, it's almost set in stone. It's like 80% set in stone. So we're looking for the works for that. And man, I'm telling you, man, I can't wait. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. So if any of you all are interested in uh, joining the gala at Northwest Kidney Center, Seattle, Washington, please reach out to Northwest Kidney Center. Also, those of you who will be in Indianapolis, Indiana, at RHA, Renal Health Association, you can get a chance to see uh, Richard Cabrera and myself, along with many, many others during that conference. So, Rich, today, today's kind of different. So, I guess today, neither one of us knows this guest. This gentleman reached out to me 
uh, a few weeks back and said that he loves what we were doing on the, the kidney trails and that, that he would love to do, um, you know, to, do, to come on as a live stream. You know, I said, uh, so he had uh, to share his story, um, you know, et cetera. And, and, and Rich, I don't know if our audience knows, and I, I know you probably know, but you're so busy. Ladies and gentlemen, today is a very special day and a memorable day, memorable day. So today I'll start off by being special is that today starts off Nephrology Nursing Technician Week. So Rich, you're a nurse as well. You've been in nephrology for many, many years. I want to say, you know, to you, I want to congratulate you for all that you contributed to the Reno, the Reno community. And uh, those of you all listening and et cetera, I want to say as well. Um, today also a memorable day because today marks as I, if I stand corrected, 21 years since 9-11 that happened in New York City. Um, Rich, you know, uh, with me, I remember 21 years ago, it was my first, it was my second year in dialysis. Uh, I, I was in my career in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I actually remember that day. It was a, it was a Tuesday, sir, Thursday, Saturday. It was Tuesday or Thursday, I can't remember. But I remember the, the individual that I was taking care of that day, and I remember a young lady who, she was from New York. She's from Queens, actually. I think she's from uh, Astoria, St. Albans, if I'm not mistaken. And whenever that happened during that, you know, during 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 uh, during, during their treatments at, at the clinic in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, uh, you know, everybody was in shock. You know, at first we thought it wasn't real. We thought it was, you know, something staged. So, you know, we we would like to say, you know, to all the family. Uh, friends and everyone who's affected by it, you know, that our hearts go out to you all, those at the KT team. Rich, do you remember what happened that day? What, what do you remember that, that, point, that do. point and moment in time? I do. And actually, um, because I'm on the West Coast, it was a little yes. earlier in the morning. So I remember specifically, I was an opener in my in-center unit as a technician back then. Right. And I remember, how, I usually, when I opened the unit, I would go in and since I'm by myself, the first thing I do is I go in and turn all the TVs on, just like to have yeah. that background yes. noise. And I usually oh, yeah. put it on a, on a news channel or something just so I could be at least hearing something worth listening to and not just some random TV show, right? So I exactly. had all the TVs tuned to the same to the same channel. And I remember that moment that, it, that everything you know, kind of started happening and, and they started covering it on the news and, and just remember that the entire day, nobody changed the channels for the entire day. They were all right. on news channels. Yes. Everybody just like blown away by what was going on and the conversation around it. And, you know, we, even though we were on the other side of the country, just the real somber feeling everybody had about what was happening and, and, and everything that was going on. So, um, you know, wow. I think it's, it's a, it's very uh, important for us to, to take a moment and remember and uh, and really just kind of not forget like what what happened on that day and how important it was uh, in the history of our country. That, that is totally correct. And, and, you know, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Rich, for saying it. And and, um, and, and that is correct, Rich. Uh, we at the K team, uh, the Kenny Trails team, all of us would like to, you know, send our condolences to all the families and uh, individuals affected by that. And we would like to have a moment of silence before we bring our next guest. So let's please have a moment of silence. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much for the KT Broadcasting Network for posting that. You know, we will remember and we will never forget. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today we are definitely going to explore the unknown territory with this guest. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we don't want to take up all of your time when Rich and I chatted because Rich and I can go on and on and talk about what we do, what we like, where we're going and where, and where we've been. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we would like to introduce Mr. 
Jeff Park. Let's take a walk in the park with Mr. Jeff Park. Thank you so much. Hi, can right. You Hello, Jeff. Yes, can sir. We can hear you, Jeff. How you doing, my man? Good. Uh, yes, hey, we sorry can. Sorry about that. I'm having some technical glitches here. Um, so yeah, I, I really appreciate the, hey. the tag you had for the show. That's great. Very clever. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate you having me on the show on your short notice. I know I kind of blindsided you with uh, my request to join, but I have been following you for a while on LinkedIn, and the right. message and the education that you are providing the community is really yes. not only personal, but much appreciated. So um, props out to you for that. And also I wanted to say, um, you know, sh a shout out to all the nurses. Uh, we, we, the patients mm. are really helpless without you all. So thank you for that. All right. And um, in memoriam of 9-11, I know right where I was at, I was at work. And right. what really is a good reminder for me is three months after that happened, I got my first kidney transplant. Wow. So it's, it's a year of memories, good, bad, confused. Um, definitely for, it was a, a very sad time for our country. So. Again, yes. thank you very, very much for, for having me. Oh yeah, not so. not a problem at all, Jeff. We 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 was hoping we get to see you, but you know, but but I guess we, we can deal with your voice there. You know, that's 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 pretty good. So J Jeff, you know, um normally when Rich and I do these shows, you know, it, it, it's mainly uh, you know, I kind of introduce Rich to, 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 to guests that, that I've known and Rich kind of, you know, he kind of I, I introduced him. But today is different, man. Today and it's exciting, too, because we get to take a walk in the park uh, and we definitely going to explore the unknown <laughs> territory. <laughs> um, Rich and I, we do we do not know who, who Jeff Park is. And now to piggyback off of that. Our audience does not know who Jeff Park is. So, Jeff, so we would like to start off. Tell us who you are, where you're from, uh, what's your, you know, what's your purpose with passion, and we want to get into what led to your 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 your, your rare uh, your rare disease as far as your 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 uh, your renal your renal disease. Cool, great, yeah, absolutely. Um, so my name is Jeff Park. I am mm -hmm. originally from Ithaca, New York. If you're oh. familiar with Finger Lakes. That's or, upstate or, New York. That's upstate. Correct. Yeah. Very, <laughs> very cold. Yes. Very cold. And <laughs> I grew up there, did my high school time there. And then I went off into Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, went to a small private school back then called Duquesne University. I mm -hmm. fell in love with Pittsburgh. It's a yeah, beautiful very, city. Very cool. It's, you know, the city of bridge. <laughs> I grew up so, there, did my high school. And then from there, I did my college time and then moved to North Carolina. And which was great about North Carolina is where I met my amazing nurse wife, Marie L. Perry. And uh -huh. coincidentally, I met her on a day when I was going to UNC for testing and found out she was from Pittsburgh. So wow. it's like, you know, when if there's a, Thing called good mojo. I, I had to <laughs> hit it. I, I mean, all the stars aligned. Absolutely. And, um, I appreciate everything she's done for me. Um, she's actually my care partner. And while I do home dialysis Ooh. and wow. so, um, North Carolina, I was a juvenile probation officer for about, let's say just about 10 years. Um, mm. it, it grew hard on me because I started realizing there was something just not right with with my body, and <laughs> it's a very stressful job. And you're you're out in the field, and you're you're dealing with a lot of dangerous situations as well. So from there, I made a very unusual hop into the clinical research industry, and I've been here oh for 17 years now going on 18 years i'm been a program manager i've been a consultant i've been as low in the trenches as you can go in clinic been there and 
I guess that's really the, my background. Um, I am, I guess, an adrenaline junkie. I do like the skydive. I do like the white water raft. The, um, oh. rivers of Carolina, where it's, uh, the mountains are, man, they're awesome. I just, yeah, they're great. Jeff, so, Jeff, I'm gonna interrupt you, but, but you know, I, I, Jeff, I'm from Fayetteville, North Carolina. And I started my career in Charlotte. So, what city, North Carolina, where you reside? If you don't mind me asking, I was in Raleigh. I was in Cary. I was in right around Durham, Morrisville area. So, I, the research, research triangle. Got you. Okay. Okay. Correct. Yep. Oh yep. wow. And uh, one giant of a company that's there that I, that, that I was with for a long time. So um, right. definitely seeing the area grow just myself. And, and Yes. And then moved to Florida about four years ago. And okay, wow. it's paradise. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, I hear that. Yeah, I, so, I live in Orlando, Florida. What, what part, what city of Florida are you residing in? Right now, um, I'm over on the Gulf side of Ellington, just a little south of, I guess, Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. Be beautiful. A beautiful area. Okay. I got, got, great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. So, 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 uh, so, 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 Rich, so what's your take on uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Park, Mr. Walking Apart? It don't seem like his life was a walking apart. Yeah, no, it's, I'm interested to hear a little bit more detail. I mean, in, in getting ready for the show, I, I kind of leaked in stalking and kind of looked at his profile. Deck, so I was, <laughs> if you see my name pop up on your list, you know where, who it was. Um, but yeah, I was, I really, I thought it was really curious. I also looked at, at a lot of your, your, um, you have a lot of volunteer work. You seems like you're really in touch with, uh, with uh, advocacy work and things of that nature. I was curious to find out about how you got your start in doing the advocacy part. Yeah, and so it's, you know, all through my adolescence, I felt like things, I guess, weren't really right. I had a lot of headaches. I had a lot of back pain. I, my hearing wasn't doing so well. My vision wasn't doing so well. And Back then, they really didn't have, and when I mean back then, I mean like probably 40 years ago, um, mm -hmm. you know, they just didn't have the, the blood testing that they have now to pick up on some of these rare diseases, which, you know, is a whole other topic. And, but my rare disease was finally around when I was working as a probation officer, I just started getting these brutal, like, headaches, migraines, my blood pressure was mm. probably 220 over 200, like most days. Ooh. Ooh. It immediately brought me into the emergency room. And from there, um, my life really kind of took a change because they sat there. I'm 26 years old. They're telling me my kidneys are gone. Um, mm. There's nothing mm. they can do. And you're going to start dialysis. I had no idea what dialysis even was. It, the education, the information really wasn't as readily available back then. So I was scared, scared shitless. And I just, you at that age, you don't know because you're still thinking I have the rest of my life to go. Right. And then it, it became, you know, it would add its blessings and then of course it's not so good blessings but i finally got to know the who what where whens and hows of why i was feeling so bad and that's when a genetic officer or a doctor came into me from yeah it was unc and said you have allport syndrome and again i'm hitting mm. i'm getting shocked like now what what is that Right. And that she has sat down and explained it so well to me that it really made a lot of sense. And for those who aren't familiar with all ports, it's really what it is, is your kidneys get inflamed, which is called nephritis. Mm -hmm. And then actually that affects the protein, which controls your collagen. And then the collagen starts kind of eating away, I guess they call it the basement of the kidney, is your glomeruli, um, those oh. tiny blood, um, blood you know, vessels that filter out the, the waste and the water 
are were gone and so i would never had the stage one stage two i was immediately at stage five which is wow. on stage riddle so oh wow i really look i followed the direct path of what that rare disease was going to have in store for me because it starts affecting you in your adolescence and by the time you're 40 your kidneys are usually gone your your vision is gone you're to a point where your hearing is failing in your ears have that collagen that protein in them as well so i mean you think about it that equation is if your collagen's going in your kidneys it's going to go where the collagen is Wow. So it's a very rare um, disease. It's it's mostly in males. Um, it's and it, they the all parts I have is called XLAS, which is usually predominantly in males, and mm. it usually come from your mother's DNA. Um, and it's because there's a mutation in that X chromosome, so that's why there's the XLAS. And wow. so that's what got me into, uh, into dialysis and hemodialysis. And I've been doing it for 24 years now. And I've seen the industry change in such a way that it's really honorable to be a part of something where like this, where you can get your word out to the masses yes. and have them really put a, a, a good understanding to what the patients and even the care partners go through. So mm, yes. That's right. really the, yeah. the, 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 without getting too physiological and it's of all port syndrome. Hmm. Man. Man, this is this is this is a great way to start off nephrology nursing technician, uh, ne uh, excuse me, <laughs> nephrology nursing week, excuse me. Um, uh, because like, you know, um, Rich, I don't know about you, but this is my first time ever hearing anything of this sort. Now, Rich, you may know more about it than me. I'm not sure, but, um, uh, this was the, you know, whenever I, whenever I got the message that whether it was, I, I literally had to Google that. So, wow. Right. Mm -hmm. No, I've, I've had a few patients in my, in my time in dialysis mm -hmm. that have, uh, had all ports, but it is a very, a rare, uh, uh, etiology for, for renal failure. Um, mm -hmm. but, but uh, like I said, when you get exposed to so many patients uh, over the years, like, like True. I have it, you know, you tend to run into these, these, uh, you know, rare cases. And so, yes. um, you know, and that's why I think it's important, uh, you know, because a lot of times people think, well, if you're, if you're on dialysis, it's probably because you're diabetic or you had high blood pressure, right? Because those, right, right. those are the two main, com you know, common uh, causes for, for renal failure. Um, but a lot of people don't know that, that there, there's sometimes those, even, you know, the, the high blood pressure or diabetes uh, come along with a lot of other, uh, you know, pre-existing conditions or, or, you know, mm -hmm. other diagnoses that kind of go down that road. So I think it's important for, for everybody to understand like the different types of, 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 you know, causes. And this is a perfect opportunity, Jeff, to talk about yours uh, because I think, you know, the goal is to educate, right? I mean, I think that's mm -hmm. what most of us like to do is, is educate patients so that, you know, I know for my dad, he knew nothing about renal failure when he went through his experience um, and, and of renal failure and having to start dialysis. And so I think from, from your perspective, since you are such a, an advocate and I know you're out there working with, with uh, the National Kidney Foundation and, and other organizations, um, how do you, what's your take? I mean, do you think that we do enough uh, to get the public aware of, of the dangers uh, of kidney failure or how to avoid uh, becoming a, a, a renal patient you know I, that's a really that's a that's a the million dollar question and i think from my perspective um there there are avenues out there there i mean there is on the the american kidney fund and they do they're fundraisers you know you'll see them at, at um, you know like state fairs and you know kind of things like that but you know, when you kind of look at the commercial side of it, you don't often see too many commercials about how to protect your kidneys. And, the, you know, they're talking about how to manage the diabetes after it's already happened. So where are the, the precursors to try to 
kind of be more proactive. And I think mm -hmm. that's where advocates come in really handy and not just advocating for, you know, I know that we have that a lot of the legislation in past now for if you're a donor, you you'll, won't lose money from your job and those kind of things. But as far as the patient centricity, I think we need to do a little bit more. And that is, I think, you know, the nurses have a tough enough job as it is. And that's kind of where the social workers need to come in. If, if this is unfortunately, if you've made it to dialysis and they educate you, but again, it's after the fact, not getting out into these, um, you know, smaller communities. We're not, we just don't have enough. And, you know, we're diversity and inclusions become the million dollar topic. Um, mm -hmm. True. Um, right. We all need to do more. We, we all, even the, and that's, you know, my take on it. And that's why this for me, again, is another great opportunity because for, you know, 20 some years, I've, I've, I've hid my illnesses from employers. I've hid them from, you know, people who just aren't on that need to know basis. And I mm -hmm. just couldn't do it anymore. It's, I just mm -hmm. need to be public because I have a voice that could be a, a voice for a million people who just don't, just can't speak that's about right. it. And that's, you know, that's why I like to write about, um, you know, the books aren't, you know, bestsellers, but it's something from my point of view and my perspective. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that will sink in with, you know, other people who aren't f as familiar with kidney disease, but yeah, I mean, there's diabetes and blood pressure. We can do something about that. Absolutely. Oh, wow. so, That's great. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh no, my man, don't be sorry. I mean, you know, you're telling your story and and like you said that, you know, you, you said one key element, we all, we all of us, everybody, we all need to do a little bit more, um, be, do, do, do a little bit more better and, and, and to, to raise awareness. Um, that's the one thing we do here at the Kidney Trails. We try to, you know, bring awareness as far as, um, and that's why we use our platform, you know, we try to remain positive, uh, you know, and, and, and just bring people together, you know, that's why Rich is the innovator and I'm the glue, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, Jeff, you, you touched on yeah. it. I think, I think that's something that's really cool about what you just said, because you, you mentioned mm -hmm. that you were hiding your disease from employers and, and, and things of that nature, because you just felt like it was something that you kept to yourself. Can, tell me a little bit about that. I mean, because what what I know you said you got you you couldn't do it anymore. What what was there any like particular incident or or something like that that something that triggered you to to want to share your story more? Um, well, I I think it's the the being a probation officer that had enough stressors itself, and I was, my body was just kind of just I was tired all the time. I just didn't have the energy to to manage my responsibilities and, and th those kids were my responsibility. And so when I kind of dropped into clinical research, I thought this was going to be an amazing platform and way to actual be, to be able to get your hands in the pot and make differences and, and make change. And so, but, you, it's hard when you have a, a what I think is a disability and you don't want to let an employer know that because you worry that you, everyone's under so much pressure, tight timelines. And the last thing you need is to have some kind of liability. And I think a lot of people with any kind of illness think they are a liability and they don't want to speak up and say, I need something for my I, you know something that'll help me see my monitor better or something that'll help me hear the phone a little better you know things mm -hmm. like that you feel ashamed and it kind of brings you into a lot of social isolation sometimes and mm -hmm. and yeah. i think you know and people can mistake that as being you know rude or arrogant or too shy to handle it really you are more I guess what's an introvert and it sometimes has negative consequences, but I think 
I've hit it for so long and it's, you know, I can do my job and I've been doing it very well for 17 years. So mm. that's awesome. That's great. That's great, man. Great. You know, I, sorry to cut you off. I want to give a shout out to, I, I believe this on Facebook, we have Michael Christina Gilchrist out of the state of Utah. They say hello to you, Jeff. Uh, you know, they, 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 oh, they want, we want to thank them for being on the show. Uh, we also have Mr. Jonathan Freight Train Trailer out of, out of the great state of Texas. He is, uh, he is, <laughs> Jonathan has been, been, been a major supporter for the Kidney Trails as well. So we want to give a shout out to him as well. And uh, he, he says he thanks you for uh, being on the show as well. And hats off to you. Yeah, Mike and Christina, That's I'm awesome. going to be in, I'll be in Salt Lake City this week if you uh, want to get together. Glad to hear you. I hear that. Tuning in. <laughs> I hear that, man. So, so, you, so, so, uh, so, you know, Jeff. I mean, you know, you say you, you say you. How many books is you said that you that you authored? Is it one or two? It's two that I'm probably most proud of that have to do with dialysis and and chronic mm -hmm. kidney disease. And the 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 latest one, which was called Chronic Kidney Disease, kind of life after diagnosis, was more mm -hmm. of a, a lot of feedback from other patients and they got to share their story inside that mm. book as well that was a, a good collaboration of a lot of people nurses um had a couple mm -hmm. of doctors um been so that is a book that you know if i had to plug something i, I that is something i would definitely um recommend to really anybody who may think you know, hey, I, but do you know it all from the patient's perspective? Do you know mm -hmm. it all from the families and the care partners? That's that's what these books are about. They're not about, cool. you know, me. It's about everybody. I hear that. Your, your, your life lessons, man. That's the, yeah, that, that, that's one thing that we value. I love that. I love it. Yeah. You yeah. know, you know, that's important. And, and you know, and like, having been both on the professional side and on the, the family side of, of that uh, in that situation, I can tell you, you know, from a professional perspective, it changes everything for you once it affects you close to home. And so I think, you know, your perspective is important. It's it's nice to have people offering resources out there and, and a book. What a, what a great way, especially a compilation of, of like you said, different um, different uh, patient stories of how to cope with the diagnosis once they've been diagnosed. And I, I you know, I, I look forward to it. I'd, I'd love to check it out. Maybe if you, if you have a second, you can post it in the, in our comments there. Uh, and that way we can share that, you know, a link yes. or something where we can find your, your book. And that way everybody in our, our audience can also have the ability to, to find that book as well. That'd be Amazing. Great. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. Most, most definitely, most definitely. Jeff, let, let me ask you a question. All you know, off subject. Would you consider yourself strong or numb? Yeah, I would absolutely say I'm strong. I'm strong in the mind. Um, mm -hmm. This disease and any kind of chronic disease will change you. It'll you will find a deep, deep passion to push through and fight and you'll find that strength that you never thought you had it's it's there you'll be able to adapt you'll be you'll be flexible you'll be open-minded i think more open-minded you'll be more focused on taking care of yourself and what's important mm. to you so yes i think i would consider myself um a warrior as uh say and it's true they're warriors all I hear them. that. Yeah. Wow. I hear that, my man. Oh, man. I mean, today it has been fulfilling to me. How about you, Rich? It is. It is. And I, and I think that's the, that's the piece that I, that I love. Like, you know, when as I was, like I said, I usually do go and do some research on our guests before they, they, they come on, just so I won't, I'm not coming in here, you know, completely blind. I want to know a little bit about our people before we <laughs> bring them on. But... But I noticed there's a lot of parallels because I, I looked at your at your profile. I saw that you were a probation officer. That initially that's where I wanted to go. I was trying to go into the criminal justice system uh, when I was in college, and uh, I actually was a volunteer probation officer uh, while I was in college oh, for for about a year. Um, and, you know, and then of course things happen, things change, and you know you get put on different paths. And 
I ended up on, in dialysis and, uh, and, you know, and I found my, my niche, uh, but I've always uh, it really loved to the, that, that area of being able to go in and especially the juvenile probation area. And, and I know that that's something that, that you did for, for quite a while. Um, I mean, and I don't want to just stick to the, the kidney stuff, but I mean, talk, can you tell me a little bit about that? Because I want to know, like, was it hard to transition? Cause I know you said you, you had a point where you made a, a change. You went from probation officer to change completely career paths. Can you talk a little yeah. bit about what, what that was like? Sure. Um, so I was on the kind of the intensive side of the probation. Um, that's mm -hmm. where you're, 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 you're carrying a weapon. Um, you, you know, you have your pistol and you're going into some of these, um, homes that are just in shambles and you just can't believe the things that you're walking into and that you're seeing and you know crime is is everywhere it's it's not just one race two races it's everywhere and i think when you start seeing that from a more subjectively you start is hoping they're all honest but i think over time, it just got to be too stressful. You're spending a lot of time in the courtroom. You're spending a lot of time um, condoling um, really upset parents who had their kid just arrested right in front of them or all that kind of thing. Just eventually, it it breaks you down. And it, it is hard to let go of. And so when you move into something that's more desk kind of heavy, you get ants. I can't lie. You know, you, you're ready to kind of run out the door and go to a call or go to the courtroom. But I think it was a good position. It, it of course, take, like I said, take time to just kind of really de-escalate yourself and, and finally just breathe and, and find something that gives you just as much passion. So, um, mm. I guess mm. like that's kind of more of a, I think really in the end, I think yeah, I would say it was more of a psychological thing to leave than it was um, a physiological, but okay. whatever case it, it was definitely a, a transition, but yeah, I like what I do now and it's nice working from home and yeah. And just, yeah. So that's, <laughs> it's all good. All good. <laughs> I, I, you know, I haven't had the privilege to work from home. You know, um, I, uh, I, <laughs> I had a chance to be able to sit behind the, the camera with my pajama pants on and my dress shirt and tie. I always want to do that because I see people doing that, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great that you get to do that, Jeff. Uh, I, I mean, um, Jeff, I, you know, uh, we still have a few minutes. So I, I want to ask you this question. So what's your five year plan? So, like, for example, we have today I'm a firm believer in everybody you meet has a last day with you. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm big on quotes, you know, mm. and that quote, that quote is not mine. That's from someone else. I, I forgot who it was to mention. But um, today you do what you do today. Right. But what's your plan for tomorrow and the next five years? Because I heard you say earlier that we all need to do better. And, you know, those of us at the Kitty Trails team, we strive every single day to say, what can we do better than what we did yesterday? Same goes for as far as I want to be a better person than I was yesterday. So what is your what are your what are your plans? I mean, if, if you don't mind sharing. Yeah. No, not, not a problem at all. You know, there was this. Um, a good Bruce Lee. I'm not really a big karate fan, but he had a <laughs> fantastic quote that I like to, to kind of revert to every now and then. And he, he mm -hmm. said that you really were all like water, right? Yes. We're navigating. We're going right. in and around rocks. We're trying to find our way over. And we want to get to that destination, which, you That's know, right. the river or the ocean. So that is such a quote that I really do try to live by when I do get up every morning. I want to find a way where I can not be open. I want to be a better friend. I want to be right. a better colleague. I want yeah. to just have a bigger voice in 
kidney care and rare and ultra disease care. I think mm -hmm. five years down the road, I can see myself still working. Um, mm -hmm. Work has never been a challenge. I mean, you know, That's when good. you get your transplant, it's a little difficult, but um, I think and along that way, I am waiting for my third transplant, which um, I've been waiting now for about seven years. So, mm -hmm. um, and the problem there is when you have transplants, your your immune system builds up all these antibodies, and mm -hmm. it just it rejects kidneys. So, I think I'm going to be working. I'm going to be living in Ellington with my wife and our family. I'm going to be right. doing the things that excite us traveling mm -hmm. there you go just going to the beat hang there you out. go yep there you go there you go I, I love that key where you said i'm going to be i don't yeah. want to i'm going to be you know and, and jeff i i i, 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 I said it before i'm gonna say it again you've been waiting seven years brother third time's a charm seven is a lucky number it's gonna be a walk in the park jeff <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yep, I'm, I'm ready. You know, that phone's by my hip. When I see the, a Tampa area code come up, I'm answering that phone. So, you know, things, on, things are going to be on hold for that call. So, no spam, yeah. huh? No spam calls, huh? No, exactly. <laughs> right on. Yes. That is good. Oh, that man, is good. Guys. So, <laughs> yeah. so that, Jeff, that, I wanna, I, I'm curious. Right, so, I, if you don't, if you don't want to share this, then that, that I'm I'm okay with that too. But it, just curious, how many different types of uh, treatments have you have you undergone in terms of like dialysis options? Like, have you only done like in center, or have you done other things uh, outside no, of treatment? That's a, that's a good good question. Yeah, I've I've done in center hemo for about eight. Uh, well, I guess long time, 20, 24, 23 years. And just two years ago, I finally made a decision that I have to do home hemodialysis. Um, the freedom that gives you and to be able to really do treatments whenever you need to, so I can work my work schedule around that. Um, and, and thankfully, my wife has been the most amazing of care partners because without her, I, you know, I might have given up a few years ago. I had a very dark, dark time a while, a couple of years ago. And, but again, I had to just fight because I was just, I had to. So, yes, uh, I recommend home hemo. I'm, any place for anybody mm -hmm. if you have to go through mm -hmm. dialysis absolutely yeah i agree right. with you i i worked as a home nurse for about 15 years uh, mm -hmm. or you know well home nurse and then of course with the, you know in a lot of different ways in the, in the home in the home uh side of the business but um you know i think that's the one thing i, I love to ask that question because um you know, everybody has different experience for different modalities, and I think it's important yeah. for everyone to hear. Patients, to me, are the most credible source when it comes to experience, yeah. right? So yeah. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I, I want to see us use, and as an industry, see us use patient advocates like yourself uh, as, as much as possible, because I feel like, you know, there, nurses and doctors, while we're really educated, and even our technicians, while we're really educated in, mm -hmm. in you know, all things dialysis, it's a big difference if you haven't sat in that chair or, or, mm. or been in that side of the, yeah. of the fence, you know? So um, I love the credibility of a patient yeah. advocate and, and I love that you're out there um, talking about your experience with people because yeah. I think it's important. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. I think as far as getting the community engaged, um, I go so far as to make t-shirts. Um, I join oh, wow. as many Facebook groups as I possibly can to mm -hmm. just chat you're not you don't necessarily have to be giving advice that just right. having that open conversation and there is an all port syndrome um group on facebook that has a lot of good information for anybody and the the people who i guess are the administrators of the group are really smart and very knowledgeable so I think the community community involvement 
starts at home and it spreads yes. outwards. That's right. Yep. So, that's, a, that's, that's exactly right. Jeff, Jeff and, I, and, I, and, I, and forgive my forgive my ignorance if I missed it. Were were you ever did you were you ever on peritoneal or you you went straight to home to hemo no. and then home? Okay. I'm just curious. Yeah, um, I yeah, I didn't want to do that. I just <laughs> I just I just knew that there were a lot of variables in that. So right. Like, oh, no. Right. Yeah. No, and you hear hey, it, you know. You hear yeah. it. You hear it. Everybody has their 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 preference, right? right? And and, right. and to each their own. That's that's a that's the best thing that that you can do is is have your options open and, and yeah. choose what fits your lifestyle the best. So the off, awesome, awesome. To that is true. Yep. You know, Jeff, my, 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 what, what got me into dialysis, and everyone, and many people do not know, many people probably do, you know, my mm-hmm. mother was, was diagnosed with ESRD, end stage renal disease, in the early 90s. And, you know, we came so mm-hmm. far ahead since then. And, you know, she started with PD, you know, and, and, uh, and did, you know, she hated that. Of course, I never met anyone who loves dialysis other than the fact that it gives life. But, you know, she, yeah. she, she transitioned to hemo, and gosh, she hated hemo so much. But, um, mm-hmm. as far as home hemo, <laughs> as far as home hemodialysis, I, I, you know, I have experience in that, you know, I've dealt with that, you know, in the past few years. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, Rich and I would be on a, a home hemo panel as far as RHA, which would, would take place in Indianapolis, Indiana. So let me ask you a question. So Rich and I are on a panel. And, you know, Rich has way more experience than I have as far as home dialysis goes. But for let's just say if let's say Rich and I are on this panel right now and you're in our audience, what 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 would you want from us or what do you think that we could be an asset or benefit to someone like you in the position that you're in as of right now? Huh, that's well, I think <laughs> or just or just or just, share, or just just share what you want us I, to know or that would enlighten us. I think what needs to happen is they're your machines are right. They're getting more, just I guess more user friendly, if that's what you mm-hmm. want to say. But you're still connected to something. Okay. Home Hemo is good, is good. But I mean, mm. you it's great. But yes. and you're you're dealing with inventory. You're doing a lot of mm. extra things that you wouldn't be dealing with in the clinic. So I think if there was a way to somehow reduce inventory burden, if the, you know, in, mm-hmm. in my situation, we have a very good nurse, but yes. the turnover, I think is something that is, needs to be a, addressed. I, that's a, I think right there is a good one. I think there's mm-hmm. a lot of turnover in home hemo because mm-hmm. a lot more patients are now going to it because that's what Medicare really kind of wants you to do. Right. Um, so I, yes, that's, um, I think there needs to be more staff. There you um, go. More, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> it just, it's yeah. Like I, in just a year, we've seen four different nurses and mm-hmm. that's hard on the patient, you know, it's right. hard on the nurse, but it's hard on the patient too. And and then you're re- readdressing your re I guess the, the word I'm looking for right here is kind of address and absorb what the other nurses personality is like and how yes. are they going to be so you you, you know you I want me to cut y'all because I'm getting excited. Sorry. <laughs> so, no, so no, check no. it. So, so, cause, cause you said staffing and, 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 and let's just make it safe to say it's clear to the, to, to, to the world. Everybody's short staff. Let's just make it clear. So Jeff, I'm a technician. I've been a technician for 22 years now. So you've been fortunate to have your wife and I'm sure she's a lovely young lady, lovely woman to be by your side. And so tell me this, what would you say to someone who possibly wants to do home hemo, but they don't have the famous support? Do you, would you recommend, and like I said, I'm I'm just asking a question. Would you Mm -hmm. recommend, how would you, how would you, how would you feel, or what's your take on having more renal technicians being a part of the home programs? And with with air, well, I mean, throughout throughout the nation, I mean, what's your take on that? Because I say this because I've actually talked to someone, you know, in the past couple of weeks that just said they, they just reached out to me and said, you know, I would love to do home hemo, but I don't have the family support or live live alone, live alone. That's what I mean. What what's your take on that? 
I'm curious about that. Well, you have to have family support. And yeah. unfortunately, I think the news for that person would be not as thrilling as they would want it to be because mm -hmm. I don't write it by themselves. They, they're training yeah. people to do home hemo by themselves. And yeah. I don't even know how you could do that. I mean, it's, I see, right. you're, that's an, I think that's just a, a bad, bad omen. I right. think for that person as much, you could sit them down with a family member, but it takes a lot. It takes mm -hmm. a lot of time and a lot of stress and mm -hmm. just a lot of attention to detail. And yeah. really, and if they, that caregiver has a, a full-time job, it'll never mm -hmm. work out. Right, that's, right. That's, until we can start getting nurse that, you know, actually would sit in with a patient for, you know, mm -hmm. four hours, but that would, I don't think that would ever happen. It's too expensive. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, yeah, I was just curious. You know, it, it, like it's a curious question. You know, because um, you know, yeah. and, and I only say that because you know, I, uh, a, a few conferences I've been to in the past that that focused on home hemo, um, you know, technicians were rarely mentioned. I'm not saying that they were not mentioned, but they were rarely mentioned. And uh, I was just curious, you know, and and, and I'm not saying mm -hmm. that it's not being looked into, but having this discussion mm -hmm. with you for someone who's going through it. I love the fact that you know that you you gave a, your honest your honest notion about it, and, and you you definitely are humble and you're grateful that you have the support. You know, my heart just goes yeah. out to the individuals who do not have that support, who probably mm -hmm. want it, right. and uh, and just maybe yeah. someone listen to the show, maybe they'll say, "Hey, that's a great thought." So I was just curious because that educates me with uh, with the limited amount of home hemodialysis experience that I have. So therefore, whenever Rich and I go to Indianapolis, Indiana. RHA, we can kind of talk about it and we can come to this common denominator, this common ground, you know. Um, so, Rich, what is your take on that? Yeah, you know, having been a training nurse for a long time and having, mm -hmm. you know, worked with probably hundreds of patients on on, on home hemo specifically, um, right. I, can see, I can see the concerns that Jeff has. And I know that there yes. are conversations out there around staff assist models and, and yes. working with insurance payers to help uh, pay for, for staff assist, um, you know, where some of these patients who don't have that family support need it, um, can, can yeah. take advantage of it. And I think, you know, that's the thing. It's like, you know, when you've got, uh, government driving policies that are going to help get more patients, Excuse home, me. you know, and we work with, um, you know, the right, the right people to get the resources we need, uh, and, and we make the right case. I think things like Jeff just said are, are you know just immensely important to hear for for the right people making these decisions about well it's too expensive or it's this or it's that it may be too right. expensive in you know when you're looking at you know dollars and cents yeah right. but when you think about the impact that it has on the patient and and the ability and you know a lot of people you know we get into all the different discussions around the home and all the benefits and one of the main benefits is that you know, home, home patients are just healthier overall. Yeah. So yeah. if you can yeah. find a way, that even if you take some of that money that you would normally spend on, you know, prescription medications or, or, you know, hospitalizations or all those things that, that come along with the, our typical dialysis in center patient and, mm. and ch channel it towards helping patients be able to do, you know, maybe a, a, a better option. Mm -hmm. then then is it really more expensive or is it just better a better use of our resources you know, I, I guess i guess it's safe to say like you said rich it, it, it takes mm -hmm. more dollars and cents but it, it, it but overall it makes more sense right, <laughs> right. And, and i think that's the thing. like for somebody like jeff i would advocate all day like you know if he didn't yeah. have a partner yeah why not because now he can go and be productive and work and and mm -hmm. be in the community and contribute to to what helps pay yeah. for some of these benefits and 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 then have them and by the way feel better have less yeah. medications have less hospitalization experiences and 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 how much money do we save it's like you can't predict how much you're you're really saving for one right. every individual patient i mean it's always a generalization and it's always like an estimation yeah. but but i no. think that's the hard part right is getting people who who think in terms of dollars and cents to to, right. to to see the impact on a people that they're servicing. Yep. So um, slowly but, but, slowly but day, surely. 
that's it slowly but surely we all work yeah. and we're pushing that rock uphill and um, right and you know and i think i think from my perspective i'm a huge advocate for staff assist and and i would love mm-hmm. to see us have more of that out in the field um for those that need it yeah most definitely. that's most definitely. awesome Oh, yeah. So, 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 you know, gentlemen, so we're approaching our last five minutes. Man, that went by quick. I really say, I would like to say. So, 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 you know, um, Jeff, what we like to do is like, you know, we like to have like our last words that, you know, that we want to touch everybody. You know, like I said, today we celebrate 9-11. You know, we don't celebrate, excuse me, we in remembrance of 9-11. Excuse me, I apologize. And we also celebrate National Nephrology Nursing, Nurses Week, which begins today and it happens all week. So, Jeff, you are a guest of honor. And this, this show has been a walk in the park. I must say, I loved it. And <laughs> if, you would like, if you would like to say one thing to our audience that's memorable, memorable to you, or to, have you mem- to, to remember you by, what would you have them say? I mean, what would you say to them? Uh, in remembrance of you, and they're like, "Yeah, that's Jeff Park. That was his saying." Or, or he loved that favorite food to eat, or whatever. What, what, what would you want to be most memorable? Uh, had the most memory of you? <laughs> well, my favorite food is so good. Um, <laughs> I, I guess in one word, I think it's solidarity and everyone mm. coming together and bridging all the gaps. And act in creating a bridge beside in the patient yes. side. So I think solidarity is an absolute on the spot good word. I hear that. I love it. 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 Jeff, just for that, you're gonna receive a free copy of my book from us at the Kidney Trails. Uh, it was a book that I wrote, graphic novel. You know, it was in dedication to my mother. Uh, it's entitled "I Don't Know About This: A Patient's uh, Initial Dialysis Treatment." And I'm hoping that you probably can relate. So we're closing up. Rich, do you have any last words before we close out on this day? No, I just want to say thank you to Jeff for for being uh, on our show today, and yes. you know, really just like like Jeff said, you know, solidarity. That's a that's a good theme for this for this day and for this week. Yes. And, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to take that with me all week in, in my travels. And uh, that's right. And, and I'll try to be the best example of that that I can. Thank Most you. Definitely. Thank I love you. it. I lo- love it. Jeff, Jeff, we thank you for being on the show. And um, I'm a big fan of quotes and, you know, like best quotes of the day on LinkedIn. Jeff, you remind me of this quote by Abraham Lincoln. I am a slow walker, but I never walk back. That's what I think nice. of you, man. I think we, I think we all can relate to that. I appreciate you so much, ladies and gentlemen. As I like to say, our LinkedIn, our LinkedIn family, Facebook followers, our YouTube users, our Twitchers, and our Twitters. On behalf of the KT Broadcasting Network, we want to send our condolences to the, all the families and everyone affected by 9/11. Happy Nephrology Nursing Week, and we would like to close out by saying we want to make your story vibe, but one word at a time. We're signing off. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Have a blessed day. Thank you.